and uh yeah and i will and definitely I'll send out that eltp uh, application to you all again uh because you know it's just in, an incredible program i got to sit in it for a few sessions with dave and kevin and it really was just fantastic so i i love it <laughs> yeah we're excited to spend time with y'all <laughs> Thank you guys. Thanks for coming and um, sharing with them so that they have a better idea of what this uh, program is and um, or at least knowing who you are. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, we'll tell them a little bit more about your pro or about the LTP program um, if they have additional questions yeah. and uh, they'll be seeing you in July. That's what's up, man. We're so excited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, oh yeah, Kat, you want to introduce yourself? Go ahead. I'm mute. Hi, everybody. My name is Kat. I'm your capital coach with RMMFI. So I'm really, really excited to be here. I'll be supporting you when it comes to grants, loan, on any kind of financial support that you guys need. So I just want to take these five minutes to introduce myself. If you've been, uh, if you're interested in a seed loan or how I, if I can support you, um, that's what I'm here for. And also by honor means, I can be your mentor, whatever you guys need. And especially if you're going through the bootcamp, I also will be there. So I'm really excited to hear you all tonight and hear what you guys pitch. So I just want to, take a couple of seconds just to use myself and just know I'm the capital representative for RMMFI. Thank you. Thank you, Kat. And I think, Don, are you having the internet issues? All right, I'm gonna... I am. Um, my internet is like sluggish. We had a bunch of rain earlier and I think it messed up my systems. It tends to around here. Um, hopefully you can hear me, but um, I'm going to start the slideshow for the pitch night. You guys ready? And do you, would it be better for you to go camera off maybe? I don't know if that would help, but. um. Yeah, that'll, that'll lower her bandwidth. Yeah. Wait, can you see my um my screen? The pitch night yes, screen. We we can see your screen. I'm gonna go uh camera off and hopefully that will help. All right, so let's get started. All right, so it's pitch night. Um and welcome. Oops, I'm going a little far. All right, so tonight our judges are going to be Nicole, Carly, Doug, and Steve. Nicole and Carly will be our um, coaches for this, and then Doug and Steve work with RMMFI. And then the pitch prize uh, tonight is a is two hundred and fifty dollars for whoever is the winner. Um, so that's exciting. The, at the end of this, you're also eligible for either a seed loan or seed grant. So upon completion the business lab, um, you can get a seed loan and some entrepreneur, entrepreneurs are also eligible for a grant. And so Kat will spend some time um, talking to you guys about that, or you can reach out to me and I will put you in contact. There's, um, you have to fill out some forms, of course, <laughs> in order to get those, uh, but they are uh, available for you. Um, so the Business Idea Lab is a program to train and prepare aspiring entrepreneurs um, so that you have a strong foundation to explore your business um, and to see if being an entrepreneur is for you. It is not for everyone. It's not for the faint of heart. And so we do this Idea Lab to let you sort of dip your toes in and see if this is Um, and then in preparation for our, well, before I go on, um, you do this idea lab in preparation for boot camp. A teaser of what boot camp is about, but boot camp is much more involved. It's 12 weeks and it dives in deep. Um, and so at the end of that, hopefully you feel prepared to really launch your business. Doug, were you going to say something? 
No, sorry. I, I thought I lost you for a second, but you came back. <laughs> okay. Um, so tonight you have a one minute pitch and there will be two or three follow-up questions from the judges. And then the judges will have about a minute or two to deliberate and decide um, and fill out like a scoring guide. And then eventually uh, you will get, um, uh, and then the winner will decide the prize. Sound good? Yes. All right, here's our order. Oh, Fred, do you have the last? Fred? Yeah, thank you, that would that'd be great. Okay, so we're gonna just, it, Doug, I hope this is okay. I forgot to mention this. We talked about it the other night. Fred asked if he could go last because of something that's come up. Respect yeah, no problem. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. All right, so Kevin, you're first. You ready? And while you're giving your pitch, we would appreciate it if you would turn your camera on so we can see you. Kevin, are you there? I think you're still muted. Hi, yes. There you go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, all right. Hi, I'm Kevin Castro. And I run a landscaping business called Xeriscapes Trinidad. Uh, since you might own a home, I understand the ongoing maintenance needed to keep up with the lawn, and the uh, use of valuable resources and your time. Uh, we offer a solution for a long-term, low maintenance, water-wise, beautiful landscape to admire when you walk outside your house. Knowing that you will be saving money uh, on water and doing something good for the planet and the community. Uh, this business is the only business that offers this specific service uh, with the knowledge and expertise in the specific and this specific category of landscaping uh, right here in Trinidad. And you can call me at uh, this phone number uh, to schedule an estimate and we can get you the lawn of your dreams. Good job, Kevin. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna, oh, the judges, are there any questions? Yeah, Kevin, I would love to know what inspired you to start this business. Uh, well, I've always done landscaping, um, usually with my dad or my brothers. And uh, I didn't really know about xeriscaping until um, till recently, really, till recently. And, um, you know, it, it just made me more aware of like uh, the use of water and um, you know, there was restrictions on, on water here where I live. And, uh, I started thinking about, you know, how much we waste water, just in little things, but overall our lawn is, uh, pretty much a water wasting machine. <laughs> so, um, for, for something that doesn't have, you know, that doesn't produce anything, you know, um, but yeah, when I started learning about uh, water drought tolerant plants and it just, uh, you know, thinking with the environment in mind, I started realizing like we need to change how we do certain things. And, um, and I didn't see anyone offering that service here where I live. So I decided to jump on that. That's awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Hey. Hey, Kevin, I have a question for you. Um, sure. I'm working, I take care of my father and I'm working on a project for him. Um, have you thought, or from your landscaping, from the landscaping side, have you dealt with all the whole watering system and drip system and stuff like that? Because I think there's a great opportunity because it's taken me 
at least three weeks to schedule somebody, at least here in Denver, to come and look at the water system. Do you know any of part of that? You, if you don't, you might want to get into that because it's it's very high in demand. Yeah, so uh, when, it, when it comes to landscaping, you still need water, especially to establish, uh, you know, even if they're drought tolerant plants, they still need to be established. Um, um, and, it's, and it's good to have an irrigation that is mm -hmm. timed, uh, yeah. you know, that that's not during the day. Uh, it's, you know, in early in the morning or late at night to water. Um, but yes, that is something I am uh, looking looking at too as well. Uh, Great. Yes. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Thank you, Kevin. All right, thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. So the next person, we'll give the judges just a second to finish up their um, uh, scoring guide. And the next person, oh, sorry, is Alicia. Are you ready, Alicia? Yes, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. Just let me know when to start and I'll be ready. All right, and if you could turn your camera on for your pitch, that would be fantastic. I cannot. My computer it needs a new driver, and it costs money that I don't have right now. So I'm kind of stuck like this, and it's unfortunate. But I am oh, sorry. I have, I have a computer for you, so we can fix okay. this before you go to ELTP. Okay. All right. So are you ready? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Hi, my name is Alicia Ray, and I have a new, okay, it says, hi, my name is Alicia Ray, and I have a new business concept to bring to our wonderful community. My company, Palmeros Carniceria and Flea Market, is developing a new way to make the best food and retail experience in ease to help with making dinner and shopping easier. We are competing with the rapidly growing food and retail market. As of the past few years, everything has gone up in price inflation faster than we can blink our eyes. And we are going to be as competitive as we can and just about as competitive as anybody in the food and retail industry. We have a standard to set, quality, reliability, and affordability. Currently, we are looking at catering private and social events, and uh, we will be in every major city event and more than likely out-of-town events. Um, we are offering catering, which is through our marinated meats, our drinks, our side options, and we will be offering a venue. We have clothes, and as soon as we set up a shop, so much more. Um, we are looking for the community to show us what they want and what they need, and for them to show up. And we hope to see everybody there as soon as we get started. And that's it. Good job, Alicia. Good job. Any questions? I think Kat has a question. Okay, I so. do. Uh, one of my questions is, my question is, uh, what inspired you to want to be a, an entrepreneur, to start your own business? Um, because I, um, I'm a Fallon, and the way I get treated by other employers, the managers, or, you know, like I'm in food industry, the waiters, especially, I get treated like I'm, uh, tossable like I can get replaced easy and I'm kind of sick of it and I, I kind of know what I'm doing you know what I mean I went to college for a few years for culinary arts I'm trying to make a living I'm trying to get out of the life situation I'm in now and I just I, I always just wanted to cook food and be happy you know what I mean so that's really why amazing thank you thank you for sharing that yeah yeah Alicia thank you so much for sharing and I'm I'm so sorry that you've had that experience and you know, it's, it's, it's not justifiable, but unfortunately we just have to deal with other human beings and, <laughs> and that's, that's how they are sometimes. Um, you, and you touched on it a little bit in your answer with Kat. And so 
Um, I know I wanted to ask a little bit about your experience with food. And so I, I know you went to school for this. Um, and so primarily in your professional life, have, you've worked in the food industry. Yeah, for about six years now, I've been doing nothing but cooking and retail. Honestly, I worked at um, there was kind of like a glass shop down here. I used to work at and we used to make clothes for like um, dart leagues or like fishing leagues or whatever. And I nice. thought I'd incorporate that into the business as well, since I know how to do that. You know what I mean? Every penny helps. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I think, you know, that's a perfect transition for you based on your experience. So I wish you the best of luck. That's awesome. Hey, Alicia, just a great, great presentation. I also want to give you another idea. Um, also look at the opportunity of giving me uh, meals to seniors. Yes. Uh, because it's a great, amazing market. Um, my dad gets meals on wheels on a daily basis. I don't know if you have a program like that down there. Um, but, you know, you, mm -hmm. you might find seniors that either can't afford or don't have that program and they would appreciate your services too, you know. So if you can, if you re reach out to them, also, um, yeah, it, it would be a great market for you. Great consideration on that. I do, I am considering that because I also have, you know, friends that are homeless as I am right now. And um, they need help too with food, you know what I mean? And if right. they come by the restaurant that I work at now, you know what I mean? I'll go pay for them a meal if I have the money, you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. It, that's something that I look forward into giving to our community. Great, great job. Do we have any other questions? All right, Alicia, thank you so much. We'll give our um, judges a few seconds to fill out your uh, paperwork, but you did a fantastic job. And Becky, you're gonna be up next, so. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, take it away. Hey, I'm Becky Guernsey, and I'm the owner of Start Something New. I am based in Sterling, Colorado. Um, Start Something New is a thrift shopping experience. I, they've said that I have one of everything, and I just about do. I have plenty to go around, and I sell mostly online or on the road. Um, I travel to the Mile High Flea Market. This coming up week, I'm traveling to Ohio to go to a concert event, and yeah, I'm going to sell as many places along the way as I can. Um, the mission of Start Something New is to promote kindness, sustainability, and self-sufficiency through a commitment to always reduce, reuse, recycle, or resell. We believe that fostering a sense of community and encouraging people to be resourceful and resilient, we can create a better world. Our goal is not only to provide quality, affordable, and unique secondhand items, but to also inspire people to live more sustainably and to be kind to one another. We believe that even small actions can make a big impact on the future and that together we can start a revolution of positivity and change. So you can find me on Facebook to where you're shopping online. Just look up, start something new, or you can call me. It's 970-466-3801. Woo, Becky! Northeast Nice. Uh, great job, Becky. Um, I wanted to ask, um, what makes your uh, idea unique when compared to other similar ones? Um, so locally here in Sterling, we have one thrift store for a 50 mile radius. It's the only thrifting experience you can have. Did you freeze for it? buying on Facebook or online and have okay. another thrift store, then I will be able to have, you know, it's almost a monopoly here. Um, but for me right now, I mean, I go to my people. I go out and I know what the people like and I, I bring it to them and they shop from the comfort of their own home, but they don't even have to shop because I shop for them. Nice. Thank you, Becky. That was awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, Becky. I just wanted to ask you, um, how has your idea improved since taking the idea lab? Um, honestly, my idea has pretty much been pretty solid for about six months or so. I have been operating the business for a while now. So um, this has just kind of helped me realize that. 
I have a question. Sure, Kathy. Thank you. Uh, in a short term, let's say three to six months, where do you want to see your business? How you project your business to be in three to six months? Well, since I just started doing the mile high flea market, um, I'd like to be able to have a good foot in that door so that I can open up to a broad, broader range of people, people who have a little bit more funds than say the people here in Sterling, Colorado, you know, a lot of farmers and whatnot here. So they can't buy the luxury things. Like I got a seven piece wicker set right now that I can't sell anywhere here in town. Um, I got collectibles up and down the, you know, I got 22 karat gold stamps that I can't sell here in Sterling. So I have to open up to a different market of in a bigger location. And that's what I'm hoping to do with my life with market. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, do we have any other questions? All right, well, thank you, Becky. You did a great job. And thank you. Uh, we'll give our judges a second. Oops, we're gonna go to back, come back to Fred. So we're gonna move on to, oh. I feel like we Okay, sorry. Stefan, you're gonna go next. Sounds good. Hi everyone, thank you for the opportunity for letting me share. Um, my name is Esteban Frenzer. Um, the name of my business is The Stage. Uh, just a few years ago, I was actually involved in a major car accident um, that completely changed my life. Uh, the accident left me permanently disabled and with the trauma that I suffered from, I had found myself in a pretty dark place. Um, I struggled tremendously um, to find hope and the will to move forward. So moving to Southern Colorado for me from Denver was the beginning of my journey to find hope again. Um, having had the entire, having had my entire way of life change so drastically and feeling the lowest that I had ever felt um, to now opening a business, I'd like to inspire anyone who's lost their light and serve as an example that it does get better and you can truly overcome anything that you want. Uh, most homeowners have difficulty selling their home quickly for top dollar. Home staging is a proven solution that makes it easier to get high offers and a faster sale. The stage is that solution for homeowners and real estate professionals. What's also great about the stage is we not only style a home for success, but we also offer additional solutions that will definitely make the transition into a new home a breeze. So if you or anyone else you know would like some information, you can contact me at 720-403-0388, um, website soon to come. And don't forget, it's not a performance without the state. Ooh, beautiful job, Esteban. Thank you. All right, any questions? That was great, Esteban. Um, I do you, oh, hello, <laughs> you still there? Yeah. Um, I wanted to know, do you have experience uh, with staging uh, prior to starting this idea or any, you know, anything else related to like design and, and stuff like that? Great question. Um, recently in us, um, me and my family moving here to Southern Colorado, we um, have completely transformed two of our homes. So um, redesigning it from kind of the stuff up and then incorporating all the interior design. Um, it's something that I've always taken pride in showing off like my previous homes and stuff. So it's always been something that I've been complimented on and strive to kind of share with everyone else and bringing that um, unique eye to things. So other than just my own um, stage, you know, on my mother's house, uh, that's about. Yeah, no, I think that's a, that's a great place to start. So that's, that's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, it looks like Jen's uncle needs some help in Sterling. So <laughs> that's awesome. I'm mobile. <laughs> um, any other questions? Okay. 
No. I have a question, um, Esteban. What's your uh, three month goal um, for getting your business started? Also a great question. Um, you know, in the next three months, I'm really um, in the planning phase. So my biggest um, goal right now is to start networking, putting myself out there and kind of dialing into the area and local homeowners, uh, real estate professionals, but definitely planning on getting my website going, get my business registered and making sure that I start building those contacts to have a successful network. And I kind of Good job. Okay, any other questions? All right, well, thank you so much. That was a great presentation. Um, uh, Jaylene, you're next. Can you see me? I'm not sure what's going on with my camera. You can see your table. Yeah, yeah, I switched it to me. I flipped the camera and it's go. still not. Is it showing oh. me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, now we can see you. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for the opportunity. My name is Jaylene Romero, future owner of Jay's Compassionate Care. I'm starting this business to help the elderly and disabled stay in their stay in the comfort of their own home while maintaining their independence for as long as possible. What sets my business apart from others is that I will offer semi-skilled care with integrity, empathy, compassion, and understanding of both client and family. For more information, or if you're interested in me caring for your loved one, please feel free to contact me at 719-680-4390. Woohoo! Great job, and I love the hutch. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Do we have any questions? That was wonderful, Jaylene. Uh, thank you. Thank um, you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I I know you. Um, uh, you have a lot of experience uh, with this kind of thing because, you know, I, I was a coach and I got to talk with you a little bit, um, but would yes. you mind sharing with the rest of us, like a little bit about your background and what makes you qualified? So I have my CNA, I have my AMTB. Um, I've been doing it now for about four years and I just want to get deeper in with the licensing, the insurance, the, and there's a great need for for it in our community um, because there's not one that offers semi-skilled care other than putting them in the home here are the assisted living, which the families that I've taken care of here, that's not what they want for their loved ones. And they need somebody that has the knowledge of certain skill aspects like lifting and changing and rolling and using you know, equipment that's necessary, such as the lifts and draw sheets and positioning them and getting them up and stuff like that. So I feel that it's just a need here in our area. Yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you for sharing. Uh -huh. and great I think... job. Oh. oh, yeah. No, sorry, Steve, you go ahead. <laughs> yeah, great Thank job. You. I mean, I, I, I'm very impressed, Jilly, and I think I shared uh, that I take care of my father and it's a lot of work. Yes, um, it is. And so <laughs> I want to know, based on your projections, how many seniors or people that are in need you think you can take care of on a weekly basis? Well, right now on a weekly basis, I'm taking care of two and I have calls all the time because it's a small community and yep. word of mouth, you know, has gotten around to where I can't do it right now with my hours that I am working. There's times when I work 15 hour shifts and then have 12 hour shifts, you know, so, and I'm also going to school right now for my nursing. So wow. it's gotten kind of tough. And that's why in three to six months, I hope on having a license and, you know, the insurance aspect. And this way I could kind of get the financials down to where I could start hiring people 
to help. So you could have assistants that support yes. you. Yes, yes. Okay. Great, thank you. Thank you. I have a question. Um, the question that I have is, uh, how did your lab help you to develop from having just the idea to think that you are like entrepreneur material to get this a business and moving forward? Well, it has always been a passion of mine. I come from a family that's mostly in the medical field. And also I have a, back, a criminal background that's prevented me from certain jobs. And when I have worked in a facility, I, I'm too, I don't know how to put this. I'm outspoken and I speak on what I don't like that is being done in care facilities. So that along with my background kind of has just prevented me, you know, from, so I figured it's when I've seen the demand in this area and have been lucky enough to meet some very wonderful families that have just given me the opportunity and the chance to do it. And it's just always been a passion for me. So I figured why not do it on my own? <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question for you, even though I'm not one of your judges. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, are you paid from like Medicare or no, from the private, private from the family? Yes. yes and if you're licensed, would you be able to get, if you get licensed, would the families be able to pay you with like Medicaid or Medicare or something, other benefits? I'm hoping to get into that. That's something else I need to research on how insurance works and how, you know, that aspect of it as well, because I've not been doing that. It's just all been private. And most of the families that I've worked with, you know, they are living on a fixed income from their pensions or from their, you know, retirement or stuff. So they, don't qualify, I guess, for like Medicaid, Medicare, stuff like that. So they need someone that accepts cash, you know, and that's why I also think that a lot of them don't go through like the company, like I said, like Alta Vista and that, because they want insurance and there's some private paying ones that Alta Vista accepts, but the families get upset when they're not semi-skilled. Like I said, they need more skill than what Alta Vista requires the knowledge of their employees. You know what I mean? So I'm not sure how insurance is going to work or the aspects of that. That's something that I need to do research on, but I would be willing to accept families with insurance benefits. Definitely. Well, thank you. Uh -huh. Maybe that's research for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So we are going to move on now to the next one. Oh, wait, Fred. You're next. You ready? I am ready. Thank you for letting me go last year. <laughs> All right. Hello, my name is Fred Johnson, and I'm introducing Fred Shed, bringing a custom match to your home, property, or business, ranging from the simple storage unit to a high-functioning workspace or both. I offer on-site builds and kits for the do-it-yourselfer, along with optional site preparation. I believe that every customer deserves the highest quality product and personal attention to every project, which I see lacking in the industry in today's world, and that's the top reason I'm starting this business. You can expect realistic scheduling and qualified workmanship with uh, lowest impact on your property. So if you have some storage needs, I have storage solutions. Your satisfaction is my goal. So call me at 970-200-5359 and we'll talk about getting your storage needs met. Woohoo, Fred, I love your reasoning. Way to go.
Thank you. Yeah, I, I love <laughs> Fred Shet. I think that's adorable. But do we have any questions? Yeah, I I second Don. I love the name. I think it's awesome. Um, yeah, and I, I would love to know um, what is the competition like for this kind of business in in Trinidad? You know, uh, the competition is really like through uh, uh, Big R and then Home Depot and Pueblo and stuff. And there's one outfit in, uh, oh, I can't remember the name of the town, um, just up the road here. But there's a there's a pretty good there's a good hole in the market and you know these uh just to be honest the tough sheds and and the home depot guys that come and build it's just there there's real trouble with that all the time and and uh so i, th I think there's a good uh, a good chance for market penetration here you know yeah absolutely you're offering quality which is <laughs> much better That's than goal, yeah. some places so <laughs> awesome thank you fred thank you Any other questions? I have a question, Fred. Um, what is what inspired you to, to go into sheds? Well, I, I build custom homes and have been in the building industry uh, most of my life. I owned a roofing company for a little while, about 12 years. And uh Really just uh, what's making me make the jump from working for someone else to this is my wife has skate land and uh, a clubhouse here for teenagers. And I, I want the freedom to really be more involved in that and uh, to gain a little fi more financial uh, ability. Um, and it just uh, so this is something that's small and I can and I can work into with the boss I have. I can start building sheds for the houses that that we build and, and kind of get into the market that way and get a portfolio going, you know, and just kind of move into this slow, you know, I got a, got a goal of having it all completely put together with a portfolio by this time next year. Um, and just going through the processes, but yeah, this, this, you guys are really helping me put this idea into perspective and, and, and get it, get a focus on it. Cause it was just kind of rattling around in my head and, didn't have a didn't have that oomph to go and out and just try it and this is this is my route to do that so I'm 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 real grateful for this awesome thank you all right thank you if we don't have any other questions we can move on to deliberations and Doug I think we'll put our judges in a breakout room so that they can um, spend some time deliberating. Yeah, and I'll open that up now uh, for the judges. And judges, just as an FYI, um, you can use the pitch scoring sheet as a guide, but it does not have to necessarily determine the winner uh, based on the score itself. That is up to you all. Um, uh, how much time uh, should I uh, keep that breakout room open for? Do you all need maybe five minutes? Uh, what do you think? That's yeah. Fine. Five minutes. Perfect. Then um I'll send I'll get you guys out of the breakout room at 625. All right. Thank you, judges. Sounds good. All right. And judges, you should have gotten a little notification to join that room. Um and if not, I will uh I'll redo it. I think they're there. Yep. Okay. Perfect. We're good. <laughs> and Doug, aren't you a judge? Aren't you supposed to join them? I, I don't know if I can go in there. I guess it won't shut off this session. I think I can actually. <laughs> um, yeah, I will join there. <laughs> Let me know. Just send me a Slack in case it messes anything up. <laughs> Anyway, um, so there, while they're deliberating, we'll talk a little bit more about the program and what's going on. Um, so 
The Business Idea Lab is for anybody who's curious about starting their own business, but they're not sure where to start, right? And that's why we do this. Um, and um, aspiring entrepreneurs who have often one or more business ideas because you want to like narrow them down or focus them a little bit. Also, we work with existing business owners to help them improve on their on the business that they're already in, like Fred does. Right. So we work with her on that. So, you know, going forward, also, if you have other people who are interested, we will be running these again. I, I don't know. I think our next one is next, like November or something. It's not for a while, but um, we do a couple a year. And then um, just so you know, but moving on from here, we're going to ELTP and then to boot camp. And then so here's where you're at um, the entrepreneur leadership training is what is coming up next. It's four weeks. There are eight 90 minute sessions, July through August, and there are one or two interactive classes a week. Um, the Second Chance Center, which is a program, and I'll let Kevin speak to a little bit more about what the Second Chance Center is exactly and what they do. Um, but then they host it, and then uh, the communication, value alignment, trust, building, mutual respect, and benefit team, and relationship building, empathy is a tool, renewal and presentation, self-care and reality are the topics. And Kevin, if you want to just give a little bit about that while we're, while they're deliberating. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks all. And thanks for that, Don. Um, so yeah, just to give a little bit more context beyond what we said earlier. Um, basically, I think on the slide, we've shown a little bit of what Dave was mentioning about blending seven. Oh, do I have you guys? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Am I coming through? Okay. I got a little bit of uh, okay. delay there. I hear you. Oh, cool. All right. Great. Awesome. <laughs> One, and I should start off by saying amazing to hear all the pitches. So way to go, guys. I'll give you a big round of applause before I even jump into this stuff. Um, it was awesome to be a part of that, even as a fly on the wall here. Um, but I will say, yeah, th this is kind of the structure, but really what Dave mentioned, I think the journeys that we are all on in a variety of ways in our lives and, you know, what does it mean to think about the you know, seven habits of highly effective people we really use as the foundational piece. Um, so the goal there is to really introduce a lot of those, those elements in our lives that we all think about, we all struggle with, um, and, and what does it mean to kind of rise above them? to think, you know, collectively, to think about, um, you know, the choices we're making both in our individual growth versus our collective growth and how are we building strong relationships? And then again, how those things come back to, you know, the entrepreneurial aspects and what it means for the businesses you all just talked about and growing them so that we're one, doing the, the relationship building piece, but also two, you know, we're thinking kind of strategically through that planning um, with both the lens of the business's success itself, but then also more largely around, you know, what's healthy for us as individuals. And so really this is designed again as the foundational principles of seven habits and just show of hands on the call. How many folks have at some point done a seven habits course? I see a couple, couple hands up. Yep. And so maybe you've heard some of these concepts, you know, you'll, you're here or you'll see a quick video. Maybe some of you on the call have gone through the full um, course, um, but what we're going to do is really take those foundational principles and then apply them very directly um, and, and have a lot of very lived discussions about, you know, how are we thinking through, um, you know, these elements on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, monthly, over the course of a year. And we'll have a Monday, Tuesday structure. Um, so it'll be Monday, Tuesday in the evening, hour and a half each day as this kind of details. And then we will really kind of um, have that in four week blocks. And then um, at the end, we'll kind of wrap all of the seven habits together in a little bit more of, you know, what does self-care look like on the journey as an entrepreneur? Um, and like I said, what, what was great about doing this um, last go round is really, you know, kind of it really is for folks here to, to jump in on, on subjects, topics, you know, issues that we're all thinking about that they really resonate with us and how we can bring that into the discussion and how we can all kind of solve for it together. Um, so like I said, that's that's a little bit of a snapshot of the program and yeah, looking forward to, to jumping in with you guys. Thank you, Kevin, appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for, sure, yeah. Thanks for having me.
Sorry, I've got weird sunlight coming in that just broke through the clouds. <laughs> yeah. You look very spooky. Like that. I know, it's like a floating head, you know? Don't be alarmed. Yeah. <laughs> there is a body. <laughs> All right. So the next phase after that is the business launch boot camp. It is 12 weeks. It's from September through November of 2023. There's two to three classes a week. Mostly, most weeks it's just two. Once in a while, we'll have a third class. There are mentors that we find that work with you throughout the program. Um, and then you, you will do a business plan and financial projections and qualify for a $2,000 grant and loan funding. Um, you'll do launch plans. And you really dive in and get the chance to spend some time really, I think, um, deliberately thinking about your business and about you. And there's a lot of growth that happens in that process. Um, so that is the bulk of our program. So we're hoping that all of you continue on through leadership and then into boot camp. All right. All right. Now we're ready for our uh, winners. Okay, guys, so thank you everybody for um, your elevator pitches. Um, everybody did an awesome job, but by unanimous decision, we decided that Jaylene was our winner this evening. Oh, congratulations. Congratulations. Congrats. Thank you. Great job, Thank Jaylene. you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, and then Jaylene, I will talk to you about um, if you want us to send you a um, an e-gift or if you want me to give you something in your hands, which might be easier for because we're both in. Okay. Time. All right. We'll Thank you. you. I'll, I'll we'll okay. Back. All right. So we are done. Congratulations, guys. Thank on your you. First um, Thank you all have... for the opportunity. You're welcome. We Great do job. have paperwork we're going to have you fill out before you get your grants. Um, so there's a survey, of course. We always have you do pre and post surveys so that we can always learn how to get better and get feedback from you on how to address our programming. And then um, there's some paperwork that Kat uh, needs in order to complete the loan. Do you want to talk about that just briefly or the grant or loan, depending on what you're uh, for those that are having or have talked about they having previously incarcerated, they are going to get like a grant. I will need all of you to do your uh, post assessment after the BIL. Uh, we're going to be sending an email uh, maybe tomorrow or early next week. And you guys just please make sure that you get a survey. If you're planning to take a loan where it's up to 500 from 200 to 500, zero interest. And it's up to six months. Please reach out to me. And also, that's part of the requirements for to apply for the loan after, even if you graduate from the BIL. Uh, for the for the grants, just some people uh, is um, like fulfill all the requirements for that. I will contact them directly. But if you have any questions and your interest, just you. And also for the C loan, I just want to mention you can apply anytime, even if you are in the bootcamp and the. Uh, Launch bootcamp, also you are eligible. So it doesn't mean that it's only during this period of time. Once you graduate, you gotta do your post assessment and then you can also apply anytime between now, during your uh, launch uh, bootcamp or later, whenever you feel that you're ready. That's the main part is when you feel your business, this injection of capital will help your business to grow or to test your business. That's the whole purpose of the seed loan is to test your business and see if um, if it's a good idea, if it's feasible for your marketing and before you get, uh, in, like before you get into a loan or you put yourself into debt. So if you have any questions, you can always reach me and if you don't know where, I'm gonna just drop my email. Okay. In the chat, so you can just reach me there, and if not, you can also ask uh, Don, and she will just directly direct you to me. Thank you. I'll put my phone number as well. All right. Well, thank you guys so much, and um, happy pitch. You finished your first program. And we will be talking to all of you soon, we hope. Yay, congratulations. Yay. Great, Thank you, everybody. Great job.
Yeah, great job, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Great job. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Have a great night. Good night. Good night. You too. Thanks. Thanks.